I'm going to talk about uh, um, how to fight organized crime infiltration into local politics in Italy. Uh, it's not a paper, it's going to be again a review of uh, what we know about, uh, about this. So there is a, a recent uh, United Nations report on uh, COVID and organized crime highlighting uh, um, how uh, it's a growing concern, the influence of organized crime uh, on uh, politics, uh, uh, generally uh, criminal organization having a governance role, and uh, uh, this is basically what uh, we have seen in the previous presentation. And interesting, interestingly, the report uh, doesn't talk only about Latin America or uh, the Balkans of Italy, which, uh, uh, by the way, Balkans and Latin America, I think, uh, are the two situations a bit more comparable on some dimensions, of course, not every dimension with Italy. But he also mentioned a lot of African countries and Asian countries that are not the typical ones uh, we think about when we think about organized crime influence on uh, society and politics. So how does organized crime influence politics? Uh, um, we probably all know here, plata and plomo. So bribes or violence or uh, both at the same time. Of course, it's much more difficult to look at bribes, but with violence, for instance, we see increasing level of violence toward politicians, especially in some uh, uh, Latin American countries like uh, Mexico and Brazil. In the last years, we have seen a growing number of attacks, violent attacks uh, toward uh, politicians. Why is this happening? Uh, uh, criminal organizations are interested to influence politics, first uh, at the electoral stage, influences who gets elected, so the political selection, and then in turn influence policy making. A very obvious reason is to decrease uh, law enforcement, so reduce law enforcement against the criminal organization. Another reason, for instance, in Italy is to influence policy making direct in public procurement toward firms that are controlled by organized crime. And of course, uh, winning the favor of local population, that is something, again, we have seen in the previous uh, presentation, how it's it, uh, the important role played by this dimension. Something interesting about Italy is that, uh, uh, similar to Latin American countries, we had a very high level of homicide rates in the 80s and the 90s, and this is the red line here. And then there was a strong law enforcement in the beginning of the uh, 90s that was uh, successful in reducing the level of violence, not in defeating criminal organization, which nowadays are much stronger in terms of economic power, much more infiltrated in the legal economy compared to uh, the 80s. But what I want to point out, point out here is that the violence is a very bad deal for criminal organization uh, because uh, media and political attention is completely correlated to, uh, uh, to violence. So you see here on the left the number of articles covering uh, uh, mafia in the main Italian newspaper, the black line, they completely follow the trend of uh, mafia homicides. And on the right you see uh, the share of uh, MP uh, speeches in the national parliament dealing with mafia. And again, it follow the same pattern. So nowadays, a low level of violence, it's a very convenient upon this point of view to not attract the media and political attention. Okay. Sorry, something went <laughs> wrong here. Okay, so a few words about uh, Italian criminal organization uh, uh, nowadays. Uh, they are generally a uh, sophisticated organization, able to infiltrate uh, the, legal the legal economy, as I said uh, uh, before. They are able to influence local politics, especially in some areas or the country. And as I said, uh, they use uh, violence uh, strategically. So they kind of, of uh, avoid homicides. So today, uh, the homicide rate in Italy is about half of the Finnish one, for instance. So it's one of the lowest in the world. On the other hand, we see a widespread use of threats, a other type of violence toward the local politician, which are less uh, visible. They don't make their first page or national newspapers. And this is something we study in a paper in which we show how this type of intimidation, threats like uh, uh, burning the cover of a politician, sending a threaten, uh, threatening letter with a bullet, are extremely, uh, are very common, especially in some areas of the countries. And again, this is a strategic way to use violence because uh, uh, we are not really talking about it, not even uh, um, in Italy. So now the core of the presentation is, is going to be about a policy that has been adopted in Italy in the last uh, 30 years to fight uh, the influence of uh, criminal organization of local politics. 
that it's about uh, the city council uh, dissolution and uh, the appointment of a technocratic local government in municipalities where there is uh, uh, this infiltration of a criminal organization. So the idea is quite simple. When uh, the national governments uh, are so suspicious of ties between criminal organization and municipal politician, the elected the municipal government is uh, uh, removed and is substituted with uh, um, a few uh, national appointed commissioners, so those are uh, like uh, uh, bureaucrats, uh, technocrats, up to two years. And then there are new elections. So the idea is that uh, the commissioners should go there, restore legality, and manage uh, uh, public spending. So they have all the power of the locally elected politicians. So this law has been enforced more than 300 times uh, in uh, um, 30 years, uh, and um, usually in a municipality of a size of 10,000 inhabitants, but it happens also a few times in uh, a big uh, municipality. It's a very strong and silent intervention because it's about the removal of elected politicians. So there is a lot of media coverage uh, at local level, also at national level, um, especially when it's about uh, bigger cities. So this is a map, and uh, um, if, if you know Italy, you know this is mostly a problem in southern Italy, although there are in recent years also um, cities in uh, northern Italy in which this law has been enforced. So there are a few policy evaluation uh, papers in the last few years that have looked at the effect of this law, and uh, um, they have different estimations, but more or less they are all about uh, doing the same things, so that is a difference in difference, so we look at difference in the outcome across the space and across times. So just to give you an idea, we take a municipality that has been dissolved at a certain point in time, and we look at this municipality before and after the dissolution, and we compare this with a similar municipality nearby. So we exploit the variation across time and across the space. So what do we find? So in the first paper on this topic, we find that there is an improvement in political selection in terms of politician ability, uh, looking at the level of education. So this uh, policy intervention increased the level of education of the newly elected politicians in the next electoral round, and the effect is uh, stable over time by about 20%. Uh, what's the idea here is that when there is uh, a reduction in mafia presence, politicians pay off go up. In other words, being in politics is less dangerous if mafia is not there. And in line with this, we also see more younger uh, candidates and more female candidates entering politics. What happened to the policy making? In another recent uh, paper, uh, we see that uh, um, the newly elected politicians spend less in sectors that are uh, more likely infiltrated by criminal organization, which probably before the law there was more rent seeking, that is construction and uh, waste management sector. And in a recent uh, uh, working paper with a very neat estimation strategy, we see uh, quite a strong positive effects on local economy in terms of economic growth and employment, which goes up by 16% over um, a nine year period. So a very strong effect, partially driven by a switch of workers from the informal to the formal sector. And we see also spillover in nearby city with evidence of less waste when seeking in a, a city near uh, the one uh, dissolved uh, um, because of mafia infiltration. So overall a very uh, positive picture, but of course there are also some uh, caveats. Uh, the law obviously is not enough, uh, it doesn't always work. Uh, as there are many cases of repeated dissolution. So about 20% of uh, a municipality that have been dissolved have been dissolved more than once, some cases even three times. So I think it would be naive also to think that such a long-term problems in some cases will be completely solved by a single policy intervention. So I don't find this uh, surprising at all. There are also uh, two cases of uh, municipality without a, a government because the influence uh, of organized crime is so strong that nobody wants to run for mayor. Also, the commissioners, the technocrats that go there uh, seem to not be always uh, happy about the reaction of the local community, both in terms of citizens that appear indi indifferent and uh, the local employees, so in the uh, city council, that do not seem uh, really supportive because often the infiltration of the uh, mafia is taking place not only among the politicians, but also about among the uh, employees in the, in, uh, in the city council. 
Um, so I think uh, this is overall a successful uh, uh, story because, again, I think when we look at policy, we should look at the marginal effect. We cannot expect to completely solve uh, such a um, complicated phenomenon. So this is a strong uh, policy, relatively uh, cheap, with potential beneficial effect uh, on uh, the local economy and local politics. So I will, uh, um, yeah, I think I will take le less than five minutes. So I will... Uh, 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 concluded the presentation with uh, some general consideration. Of course, every country has a different story, um, but uh, um, I think, uh, yeah, in the case of this policy had to be exported in other countries, uh, um, I want to alight some risk. So a few years ago, the Mexican government was discussing a similar policy. Uh, at the end, I don't think it was approved, uh, but uh, um, yeah, there is a debate also in other countries about this uh, a similar policy to be uh, implemented. So the first is that this is a very strong intervention, as I uh, said before, because it's about the removal of uh, democratically elected uh, local leaders uh, without conclusive evidence, because the national government takes this decision in a few months. So obviously there isn't time for a, a real trial. And uh, uh, as you can imagine, there is a trade-off here between having conclusive evidence and speed doing this uh, uh, on time when this is relevant. And indeed, uh, we see that there are out of 323 cases of revoked dissolution. So cases in which the national government realized to have uh, made a mistake and they go back in a de decision reappointing the old uh, local politicians. So what does this imply? There is a high risk of political manipulation. You can uh, just uh, use this law to remove uh, your, your political opponents. In Italy, there isn't uh, much evidence of this uh, going on. Um, I think also because the local politics in Italy is not so much driven by national parties, but more by um, civic uh, parties not affiliated to national ones. So a, a possible solution of this could be to uh, have a, a, an anti-corruption authority to uh, regulate this policy, this policy instead of the national government. So another consideration is that in context of low trust, uh, bureaucrats uh, and uh, um, so the local employees uh, and the citizen might be hostile to those appointed uh, technocrats that having all the eventual uh, positive effects. So it's very important that this policy is perceived as rightfully uh, motivated and uh, for the selection of a uh, commissioner plays a key role. So for instance, now the debate in Italy about how to change this policy that uh, has been in place for 30 years, which for, for Italy is an extremely long time, is uh, to focus on specific training for the uh, commissioner and also to increase uh, the state capacity and the number of employees uh, in the city council in order to give uh, stronger support to uh, this uh, technocratic technocrat body. And uh, um, finally, the last point is that uh, in context with the high violence, or also homicides, not only the threats that we see in the Italian context, it's very important to guarantee the safety of uh, both a local politician, of course, and those uh, commissioner that are uh, totally external to, the, um, to what's going on in, uh, in a specific city. Okay, so I think I was uh, even shorter, good. <laughs> so thanks again.